Hi, so I'm Justin Largent. I'm a competitive kayak angler. I'm here with Missile to talk about my kayak setup. Uh, specifically, this is one that I use for, for river kayaks. It's a, it's a more friendly, uh, budget-friendly option. Uh, it's kind of a, a throw-and-go boat. Uh, but I think it's a great boat, uh, or a, a great type of boat for somebody that's just starting out. Maybe you're, you're thinking about getting into the kayak game and you've seen some of the prices on some of these higher-end models where you're spending you know, $3,000, $5,000 on a boat and that's not you know, in the cards for you. Um, there are boats out there that you can fish out of, you can compete out of, uh, that are, are much more friendly on your wallet. And, and this is one that, that I use. Um, you know, before I jump too much into the specifics of the boat, um, I'll talk about some places or some advantages to a boat like this. Um, this one is a Crescent Ultralight. It's 10 foot. It is, I believe, 47 pounds. So it's, it's much lighter than my, uh, my normal tournament boat, my bigger rig. Uh, which is a Hobie Outback. Um, it, it's somewhere in the 100 pound range. So significantly, you know, almost double the weight of this, uh, if not more than double the weight of this. It's, uh, it, you can do a lot of things with that bigger boat. Um, but all of those accessories and things that you put on it, they add weight, uh, it becomes cumbersome. Um, they're great boats, I love my Outback, but there's a place for a little boat like this and again, it's perfect for somebody who's just starting out. Um, one of the things is, is portability. That, that, that light weight, you can throw it up on the roof rack on a car, uh, you can throw it in the bed of a truck. It's very easy to, to get in and out of the water, uh, much easier than those heavier models. You don't need a, a, a fancy trailer for this guy. Uh, again, it, it's just very easy to transport almost regardless of what type of vehicle you drive. Um, similarly, regardless of where you, you live, you know, maybe you're a high school angler, college angler, somebody that's living in an apartment and you don't have a place to park a big trailer or to stick a, a gigantic boat. And something like this, it's going to be a little easier to find a little, a little nook to stick that in um, where you, you can still get at it, you can still enjoy it, uh, and you have a place to actually keep it. Um, another advantage, uh, something like this is it's, it's going to be a little bit stealthier than those bigger boats, in my opinion. I can take a small kayak like this. Um, I love to get in grass, in shallow grass on tidal fisheries, um, and you can just slide through that stuff. Um, you don't have a motor that's chewing it up, making a bunch of noise, uh, or, or any sort of pedal drive system that's getting hung on the grass. You can slide through. Uh, it, it's really where something like this shines. And also super skinny water. Um, you know, pedal drives have a pretty good draft. Uh, you don't have to have super deep water for them. Um, but even on this shallow river that I'm on today, a pedal drive is just gonna be, it's gonna be in the way. You're gonna be constantly hitting rocks. Whereas something like this, I can navigate easier. Uh, I'm not banging into things. I'm not spooking fish. So uh, a, couple of, a couple of ways that, that this is a, uh, a sneaky little boat. And, and honestly, this is something I've fished tournaments out of. I've had some good tournament days out of this boat uh, when I'm in the right situation. Now, situations where I won't want to take this, if I'm fishing a big body of water, um, if I'm fishing offshore, if I'm fishing in real windy conditions, this boat's going to be tough. Uh, where those, those pedal drives and motors shine is covering water. You can cover a lot more water with those without being physically exhausted from paddling uh, or even pedaling. Um, and those bigger boats are going to handle the wind better. You can use your feet to pedal and hold yourself in place and you got your hands free to cast. With a boat like this, it's not going to be as, as user friendly in the wind. You're going to have to paddle, 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 put the paddle down and cast. Um, but yeah, that, some of the advantages, um, I'm sure I'm, I'm leaving some stuff out, but I really like little boats like this, throw and go boats. Uh, they're perfect for, you know, maybe you don't have the whole day to go spend fishing. Uh, you want to get on the water, you know, for a couple hours after work, having something small like this, uh, you can grab a couple rods, a couple of baits, not a whole lot of stuff, not a whole lot of prep time. You can get out there, catch some fish and get back home for dinner. So uh, I'll start with the paddle. This is one that I actually got at Academy. Um, I like these bent shaft ones. Um, for me, I'll, I'll do a lot of one-handed paddling in certain situations. Like say I'm fighting a fish and the fish has got the kayak turned. I can brace my arm against this. Um, and for me, it's just, it's more comfortable with this style over a different one. 
and this is, I wanna say it's $150, somewhere in that price range. Um, you can spend a lot more. Um, I've spent you know, money on a very, very high-end Werner paddle. Um, you know, and I, I very clumsily lost it uh, last spring, but it, it's a great, a great paddle, but it was somewhere around $500. And it's just, unless you're out there doing it an awful lot, uh, there's not that much of a difference between a carbon paddle like this, that's nice and lightweight, um, and that higher end. There is a difference, but for me, it doesn't justify the price point. Um, so that's a, a good, um, you know, relatively inexpensive middle of the road paddle. Um, you can get, I mean, for years I used one that I just got at Walmart. I accidentally kicked an old paddle out of the kayak while I was waiting and, you know, went into town, picked up one at Walmart. I think I spent $30 on it and I used that for years. Um, Bending Branches makes a pretty good one. Uh, I think they call it the Angler, somewhere in that $50 to $75 price range that's nice and sturdy. Um, but you, you don't, again, you don't have to spend a fortune to have a good paddle. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the stuff I've got here on the nose. A drag strap. When I'm fishing rivers, you know, I didn't mention that earlier, but these smallmouth rivers, um, for me, this type of boat is perfect for that. For the same reasons, it's, it's good for getting into to shallow backwaters for largemouth. And the way that I approach them a lot is I'll put in downstream you know, at, a, at an access point and I'll, I'll paddle upstream. And if I get to a shallow rapid, I can't get up, I'll get out and I'll use my drag strap to pull the kayak up. Um, it's just basically I'm towing it along behind me until I get to water that's deep enough where I can, I can paddle again. Um, and I'll, you know, you can cover several miles in a day. Uh, not, not as much water as, as if say you're floating and doing a long float down river. Um, but you can go upstream and be very stealthy um, and catch a lot of fish uh, that way. So wading, if you're going to wade, have some type of, uh, of strap to drag the kayak. Something else, uh, nets. I know guys that, that like a really big net, like something you use on a bass boat. I like a smaller net like this. Uh, it's an Ego wade net. It's got really big mesh. It's got the rubber coating, so it's, it's easy on the fish. And it's also easy to get the, the treble hooks you know, out of this one. Um, I've got a Yak Attack. You know, if you're new to kayaking, Yak Attack's a great company. Uh, located here in Virginia, they make a ton of accessories. Pretty much anything that you could need for kayak fishing, they have it. Um, these are called Roto Grips. They make them for holding a paddle, but I've found that it's a perfect way to hold a net. For me, those bigger nets, there's just not enough space in a little kayak like this. There's other guys I know that won't even take a net for that reason, but particularly if I'm fishing with treble hooks, I like having a net. Um, it reduces the chances of me getting a hook in my hand um, or losing a fish trying to play it out alongside the boat. And this Roto Grip will hold that securely. Um, you know, it gives you peace of mind that's not gonna float out of the kayak that way. Uh, another, most of your kayaks are gonna have some sort of dry storage. Now, take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, kayaks, you know, you're out, and especially out in fast water in these rivers, there's gonna, you're gonna get water. Um, you know, I don't care what, what you know, any manufacturer says, I'm, I'm not knocking any, any manufacturer out there, but every kayak that I've owned, you know, water will find its way inside of it. So what I do for keys and wallet, Night Eyes makes these cool little waterproof bags. You know, you can use something like a Ziploc bag. Um, those Ziploc bags I've found, keys can punch a hole in them and then you get water inside it and now your wallet's wet and you're not happy at the end of the day. Uh, but I have a storage bag here that's in the front of this that secures to this, uh, this mount. And I've just got my, my wallet and keys in there. And I also keep a, uh, a little tool in here. It's just mini bolt cutters. If you ever hooked yourself um, out in the water, it's not fun. These mini bolt cutters with either hand, uh, I can cut through any size hook uh, to knock the barb off and free myself. So I, I take that with me everywhere. But dry storage, you know, most boats will have it, but just keep in mind, it's, it's gonna be a good idea to have some sort of dry bag that you're putting your stuff in before you put it into that hatch. Um, Let's move on down a little bit. If you're fishing tournaments, this is a must catch board. And even if you're just you know, fishing for bragging rights, you wanna tell your buddies about the giant that you caught, having this with nice measurements on it 
Uh, it's, a way, it's a way to do that and prove, hey, I caught a giant fish. Uh, a little trick that I'll do, there's a nice little groove on the inside of this, this boat that allows the water to drain. And I will set, you know, say I'm, I'm fishing, I've got a wet bait. I don't want to put this wet bait back in the box. Um, you know, it's going to rust and rust everything else in there. I'll just set them in that little groove and then set my, set my measuring board over top of it to where I'm not getting those treble hooks hung on things. Uh, the seat for this boat is really comfortable. Um, there's not a whole lot fancy about it, but I have a little on the back of it. I have a, I'm not even sure what you call it. It's kind of like a little accessory pack. Oop. My hobies. The, uh, the accessory pack allows me to bring pliers and I'm always going to have pliers. I just have them behind me, fastened to the back of that, that seat. I also like to have a de-hooking tool and scissors. Scissors, you know, if you're trying to trim up a skirt on something, you can use it a cut line also. And then if I've got a fish hooked deep, or if I've got a toothy fish, a pike, a pickerel, musky, um, it's gonna be a little easier with this um, to remove that hook without getting myself chopped up by those, uh, those razor sharp teeth. Water is important. I always have water with me. Um, I've, I've used these Yeti, I don't even know what you call them. Um, I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember what, what the, the model number is for this, but it's a, it's basically just a big thermos that holds uh, close to a half gallon of water. Regardless of the time of year, I'm going to have that with me. Um, and if, if I'm fishing when it's super hot and I'm exerting a lot of energy and sweating in the summer, I'll bring two of them. Uh, but it's important to drink water out there. Um, the black pack, this is kind of another, it's a fancy yak attack accessory. It's very nice, it's modular. I've got a couple of rod holders mounted on either side at an angle. And I, I like that for my river boat because this allows me to slide up underneath overhanging limbs. I can slide under bridges and underneath places. You can also rig these vertically, but you're not gonna be able to uh, sneak underneath overhanging limbs and stuff. You're gonna get hung a lot more. So I like this setup for fishing, you know, skinnier water, backwater places. Uh, but you don't need uh, an item like this. It's perfect. You can store a lot of things in here, um, but you don't have to have it. Uh, what, what most of us started out with initially was just a milk crate. A milk crate, and you can get a rod holder, one of those, uh, it's, it's a, a single piece that's got three holders on it. You can drill a couple of holes in your, your milk crate and fasten those rod tubes on that way. You don't have to have anything fancy, but that's a place where you can put, I've got lots of random stuff in here today, but you can put a couple of tackle boxes. I recommend for kayak fishing, I'm always using something with a gasket on the inside of it. And always check it, even though you've got the one with a gasket. It's, you know, they say waterproof. They do a, a much better job of keeping water out than the ones that don't. But every once in a while, you'll still have a situation where some water gets in there. So check these at the end of the day, just to make sure you don't have water in there and you're not gonna be leaving a bunch of treble hooks uh, and come back for the next trip and find them rusted. Um, for this boat, four, I've got four rod holders on here. That's about as much as I'll take with me. A lot of times I'll be sitting and I'll have a rod or two, the ones that I'm, I'm using actively sort of at my feet between my legs. Um, and I'll just pick up and alternate between them. Um, but then I've got the other one stored here. So um, you know, to kind of give an overview, it, it's a pretty simple kayak. You'll notice I don't have even an anchoring system. I don't have electronics. Um, it, this is a way to get into the sport, get out away from the bank, be able to access a lot more water that you, you can't if you're bank fishing or wade fishing. Uh, you, you can access a lot of water at a, an affordable price. Uh, this boat, I think the, I got it for, I wanna say it was 700. It was a discontinued color. I think the, the standard model is somewhere around $800. But my recommendation would be starting out, get something that is a sit on top one. The sit in kayaks, they're restrictive. My experience has been that they're not nearly as comfortable. Uh, while they are lightweight, they are inexpensive. Uh, you know, your, your back and your knees, you, I've, I've not enjoyed it because I'm stiff and sore at the end of the day. Something like this with a comfortable seat, um, it, it's by no means cheap, 
but that thousand dollar price point as close as you can get to a thousand dollars you're going to be a lot happier you're going to use it a lot more um, and you're not going to outgrow it like you would uh, I think some of the, the cheaper models that you might get at a big box store. Um, you, know, you go out a couple times and you realize, hey, the stability in this is not what I thought it might be. Um, and you're, you're, you're very quickly looking to upgrade to something. This is something that for fishing small waters, backwaters, if, if, you, if you fish in a, a farm pond, you know, this is perfect. Um, it can get you into a lot of places at a good price. Um, and again, I, there's, there's a place for these boats. There's definitely a place for those bigger, the tournament rigs with all the accessories and all the fun stuff on them but you don't have to have all that to get started you know when i was bank fishing in college i wish that these things were as big as they are now and you could get them all rigged with all these fun toys um, i would be fishing i would have been fishing one of these for much longer but that'd be my recommendation if you're looking to improve your fishing um, get out off the bank uh, a budget kayak like this it's just a great option uh, and it it's a way to have a lot of fun out there